Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the top 10 flying fighters for Warcry. The information in this video will be taken from the four Warcry Grand Alliance supplement books. We won't be including any leaders in our top 10 list, so any fighters with a leader room mark won't be included. But there's no other criteria and all we're looking for is the fly room mark. I've just picked out my favourite top 10 and in no particular order I'll be listing them, but I will save my favourite couple until the end. In the Warcry core book, you're going to find some special rules for any fighters with the fly room mark. And fighters with this room mark can fly as part of their move action. And if they do so, the fighter can move through the air both vertically and horizontally. You count the horizontal distance moved towards the number of inches that fighter can move in total in that move action as normal. But you don't count the distance moved vertically. So this makes fly-in fighters really valuable in your warband. Once a fighter begins to fly, they are said to be flying until the centre of their base is on the battlefield floor or a platform, and a fighter cannot end a move action while they're flying. Some fighters with the fly room mark may also have the beast room mark, so there's going to be some restrictions there, and the core book tells us that fighters with the beast room mark cannot move through doors. Right, let's get started with our top 10 list, and the first fighter coming in at number 10 is the Cockatrice, and this is taken from the Beasts of Chaos. And here, this is 210 points. We've got some room marks, we've got that Beast room mark, the Berserker room mark, and the Fly room mark, so we are going to get an ability. The movement here is 10, so really good movement. Toughness is 4, and the wounds are 30, so we can take 30 damage points, a so huge 30 damage points. The weapon will be the Claws and Beak, and we're going to be attacking from a range of 1, making 4 attacks, strength 4, and we're going to do 2 on a hit, and 5 on a critical hit. So this movement 10 is fantastic, and when you combine that with the, the flight, that's a crazy good. Moving 10 across the battlefield and being able to fly is brilliant, especially when you've got lots of terrain at different levels. This is a really effective fighter to have, and this is one that I'd really love to add to my collection. It looks awesome, and I think would be a real good mix to put in with the Beasts of Chaos. So we get quite a lot there for 210 points, but let's check out the ability that comes with it. And this is a triple called Petrifying Gaze. They also get the Brayherd Ambush, that any member of the Beasts of Chaos Warband can have, but we won't go through that. We'll just focus on the specific abilities for each of the flies with the fly ability. So let's have a look at this triple then. So here we pick one visible enemy fighter within eight inches of this fighter and roll a dice. On a two plus, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the roll. In addition, subtract one from the move characteristic to a minimum of one of that fighter until the end of the battle round. So this is a pretty good triple. You could imagine using that 10 movement to really start moving towards any fighters that you think are either gonna to move towards your own fighters or perhaps an objective. And on then rolling that dice, you've certainly got a really good chance of getting a two plus. You're gonna be able to subtract one from their move characteristics. You're gonna be able to halt them a little bit from advancing towards either a fighter or an objective and you can also deal a little bit damage too. So you obviously want to get a high roll um, to deal more damage, but I think that combination of damage and just heeding their movement is a really nice combo. It's probably not an awful lot as it is a triple, but I still think it would be really interesting to use in the game. Now in at number nine, our next fighter is the Aetherwing, and I had to include this in the list. It's a really useful model to have, and I think comes in a great set with those Vanguard Raptors. So this one's our lowest as well, at 45 points. We're gonna get two room marks, the Flight room mark and the Scout room mark. So it comes with a pretty useful ability, this does. It's got movement 12, so nice and high, and again, we're flying that movement 12. Toughness is terrible at two, and the wounds, it's gonna take six damage points, so that's not very good either. To attack is a range of one. You're making three attacks, strength two, and you're gonna deal one on a hit, two on a critical hit. So toughness, damage, strength, and damage output are just awful with this model, and you certainly wouldn't include that in your warband to, to like for any of those reasons. But I think 
It's the ability that makes this really interesting. So let's take a look. So you're going to get the double tireless hunters to add some extra to your movement. So that's a really good one that they can have for being part of the Stormcast Warband. But the one specific to them is a double called Warning Cry. And here we pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter. Until the end of the battle round, you can re-roll one dice during attack actions made by friendly fighters that target that fighter. I really like this ability. For a double, it's really good. You could use it a lot. And when you combine it with a long strike, which is the Stormcast's kind of sniper with an exceptional range, you can really benefit from that because you can't make many rolls. Sometimes only one roll. So it's one shot, one kill. And if you miss that roll, you're not going to do anything at all. But here you can re-roll it. So really useful. And if you've got a couple of range units in your Stormcast Warband, using this Aetherwing can keep them really back and give them an extra chance at getting some hits in. But you can also use this Aetherwing to really fly around quickly and kind of just steal some of those objectives, maybe tie up an objective so it doesn't go to the enemy. So I think they can be really useful and for 45 points it's very low and you can certainly get a few of them on the board. Next up we've got the Zangor Skyfire and so as far as zines go I've never really been attracted to it that much but this is a pretty mental model, it looks really cool and for 235 points We'd hope to get quite a lot from this. So we've got some room marks going on. We've got the Frenzied room mark and the Fly room mark. We've got movement 10, toughness 4, and we're going to take 20 wounds. We've got two weapon options here. Nice to see a range weapon as well on this with the Fly room mark. So this is a minimum 3, maximum 20, a huge range. We can make two attacks, strength 4, and we're going to deal 2 on a hit. 5 on a critical hit. So that's not a bad damage output at all for a ranged weapon. So that's pretty useful. Only 2 attacks though, but still having strength 4, dealing 2 to 5 is really nice. If you get close though, you can use that crazy beak to do some damage to at a range of 1. 4 attack strength 4, 2 on a hit, 4 on a critical hit. So that's not bad stats either. So I think those two weapons combined can make this pretty effective, having that really good range of 10 to move around, but then having the weapon range of up to 20 can really steal some objectives. But again, keep this out of the way and just snip away at the enemy, really move around the battlefield and get some nice dynamic positions. So I really like these stats and I think this would be a fun one to include in the warband. Pretty high though at 235. So, you know, you're not going to get too many of these in there, but it might be nice to support some of the weaker chaff fighters. But let's have a look at the ability it comes with and see how much value that can add. So first we've got the double that all the members of the warband can use, but it's this quad that's unique to the Zangor Skyfire, and this is called Guided by the Future. And here we add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the damage points allocated by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation that targets an enemy fighter that has not activated this battle round. So there's a few conditions here. It's got to be for the, only the next attack action made by this fighter and they have to target an enemy that hasn't activated yet. And so those conditions are going to be quite effective. For a quad, I don't think this is all that good, to be fair, um, especially when potentially if they choose their range weapon, they're only going to be making two rolls anyway. So it's certainly not going to add an awful lot on there. Um, but if you're using the close combat weapon option, then you are going to be rolling four dice. So I think then it would be a bit more useful. But otherwise, I don't think this is one of the better quads available. Now we're in at number seven and we've got a Sky Warden with Aethermatic Volley Gun. And this guy's going to come in at 205 points. We've got the Trapper rune mark and the Fly rune mark. We've got a Movement 10, Toughness 4, and he's going to take 16 wounds. We've got two weapon options, another range one. Not quite so much range here. It's minimum 3, maximum 15. But look at that attack characteristic. It's a nice 6, so you're going to be rolling lots of dice with this fighter. But the strength is only three and the damage is only going to be one on a hit, three on a critical hit. So that's not all that great, to be fair. Then if we get close, though, we can use our weapon or our fist to hit them. And it's going to be a range of one, two attacks, strength three. And again, it's one to three on a crit. So for 205 points, you're not getting an awful lot here, apart from that high attack characteristic at range and that nice movement. It's not brilliant, but let's have a look at the ability. So you get the double ancestral fortitude for being part of the Carriage and Overlords 
warband. But it's this quad that's really interesting, and I think that's what brought it to the list. And here, it's called Time Charges, and a fighter can use this ability only if they are within three inches of an enemy fighter. Allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of this ability to enemy fighters within one inch of this fighter, then this fighter makes a bonus disengage action. So they've got to be close to an enemy fighter here, within three inches. And if you can get them in amongst a few enemy fighters, you can deal the damage to quite a lot of the others. But they've got to be within one inch. So there's a few conditions there to meet. So you've really got to get close to a good number of the enemy fighters to pull this one off. But I really like it for the idea of the narrative. So, you know, you're going in with these time charges, you fly in, make the attack, and then you can take out quite a few of those fighters around you. So a really interesting ability. I think it really plays into the narrative of the warband. I could certainly see this being useful when you've got a bunch of the enemy all around an objective. You can really use that huge range of 10 to fly in and just obliterate them. So I think this could be really fun to play in the game. Now we're on to fighter number six and with those impressive wings the Crypt Flayer had to get a place in the top 10. He's going to have a lot of points though, 235 points to include him and he's got two room marks. The first one is the Fly room mark and the Agile room mark and he's got movement 10, toughness 4 and he can take quite a lot of abuse here. He can take 30 wounds altogether. He's got a weapon range of 1, so it's going to be claws and teeth with this guy. He's going to make 4 attacks, strength 4, and he's going to deal 2 on a hit, 4 on a critical hit. So a pretty all-round stats here, strength 4, toughness 4, the wounds are really good. 10 moves are great when you fly, and having 4 attacks is nice too. But let's see what the ability brings to see why this is worth so many points. There's quite a few abilities going on here. As part of the Flesh Eater Courts, you're going to get the Double Feeding Frenzy and Quad Royal Hunt as well. Both pretty useful. But he gets his own Double Skewering Strike. And here we add one to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation, that has a range characteristic of three or less. But in addition, if that attack action scores a critical hit, until the end of the battle round, the target fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. So this is a really strong double here. You know, being able to add one to the strength is nice. That's pretty good. You can only use it on the next attack action though. But the, the second condition of this ability is really impressive. Being able to stop that target fighter from either making move actions or disengage actions with a crit is really good. And you're rolling four dice, so there's a good chance you could get that. You certainly want to be picking on some fighters that haven't activated yet during the battle round, so they won't be able to move. And that's really good, so you can really pin them in place, stop them moving towards those objective, stop them moving towards your own fighters, and you could even fly off with this guy and get him out of the way as well. So I really like that ability, and for a double, it's pretty impressive. Next up, we've got the Morgust Akai with Spirit Swords coming in at number five. And the image here is a little bit different. You see it hasn't got the right headgear. You've got some alternatives you can build with this model. Um, but this is the only one I could find with the swords. And I think I really, out of all the ones you could choose for these, I really like the Spirit Swords. And I think having those two really gave some interesting stats. But this one's pretty high. This is 245 points. They've only got the fly room marks and no special abilities. They've got a movement of eight. The toughness is great at 5, and that wounds of 35 they can take is pretty impressive as well. To attack, it's a range of 1. They can make 4 attacks, strength 4, and they're going to deal 2 on a hit, and 4 on a critical hit. So for the points, it seems pretty high for this, but I really like those 35 wounds. Being able to have th that many is really good. And with that 5 toughness, this guy is really tough to like take on in a battle. Movement 8 is okay. Flying, pretty good as well. Although he doesn't have an ability of his own, he does get to use the Ossiarch Bone Reaper's double called Naderite Weapon. And here you can add 1 to the damage points allocated by each hit and critical hit from attack actions made by this fighter, this activation, that has a range characteristic of 3 or less. And I think this ability with this fighter is brilliant. I think being able to add one to those both normal hits and critical hits is great and it's for both attack actions. So if you choose to make two attack actions during your activation, 
you can use this double with both of them. So a really strong double, and I think that makes up for the fact that he doesn't have his own ability. So pretty tough customer, this one, and he can certainly dish out some pain too. Now we're on to number four. We've got the Akalian Morsar Guard, and this is a great looking model. I think this looks fantastic, real fun. 200 points. You're going to get the Berserker Rumark and the Fly Rumark, and that Berserker Rumark is going to give a really good ability. One of my favourite, actually, for the Flyers, which we'll see in a little while. He's got a movement of 10, which when you're flying is fantastic. Toughness 4, and he can take 25 wounds. He's got a weapon range of 2 with that, like, Spear or Trident, and then he's also got 3 attacks, Strength 3, and he's going to deal 2 on a hit, 4 on a critical hit. So the movement, toughness, and damage you can take are pretty good. And the weapon range is nice. Three attack strength three isn't very good though, but you are going to deal two to four on a hit. Um, so, you know, you've got to weigh all those options up. But let's have a look at the ability, because I think that's what makes this guy really useful. He can use that double low tide ability that all the Iden Deepkin can use. But it's this quad biovoltaic blast that I think is awesome. And here you just allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of this ability to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter. So this is great. You get five or six. That's a great amount of damage. And again, you steam this guy in maybe to an objective where you've got a good number of the enemy fighters all bunched up. And then you can start dishing out some serious damage to all of them. They've only got to be within three inches of this fighter. So there's a good chance you can get in amongst a good, good number of um, enemy fighters here. So I think this quad makes this guy a really interesting fighter to include in the warband. For 200 points, as you've seen, the flyers here are generally quite high. That's pretty good. So I really like that one. Now we're on to fighter number three, this monstrosity, the Pusgoyle Blightlord. And for 245 points, again it's high, but you are going to get some interesting stats here. We've got two remarks. We've got the Flight Rumark and the Destroyer Rumark. He's got quite low movement of 6, he's got a toughness 4, but look at those wounds. He can take 40 points of damage, so that's really impressive. He's got that big Psy weapon, so it's going to be a range of 2. He can make 4 attacks, strength 4, and he's going to deal 2 points on a hit, 5 on a critical hit. So a huge amount of damage. He's not going to be as fast as the other flyers, but still, he, once he gets into place, he's going to be able to really absorb some punishment and take it. But let's have a look at his ability and see if that influences whether or not you'd include him in your warband. So he gets the virulent discharge double for being part of the Nurgle Rotbringers warband, but he's got his own, the double venomous sting. And let's have a look here. This is pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a two plus, that fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. So a double, this is pretty good. You've got to get close to use it, but there's a good chance you're going to roll a 2+, plus and then stop them moving or disengaging. So a good idea to pick some that haven't activated yet to make this uh, even be worth using, and I think could be pretty useful. Six movement isn't great. You're not going to be able to move around too fast, but certainly if you get close enough, you can stop some of those enemy fighters moving towards some of your more vulnerable uh, fighters or moving towards an objective. So I think that's where this guy would be really useful. Get him in there, act as a wall, absorb some punishment and really stop those enemy fighters even being able to move. I think if you could take two of these into your warband, you could really block the enemy and hold them up. You know, it's only a double for that venomous thing. So you could even use two doubles, one for each of those flyers, and then really put up some pretty strong walls, some big barriers to prevent the enemy coming through you. Now we're on to fighter number two, which is the Squig Hopper. And this is probably my favourite looking fighter. I think it's fantastic. I like all the different squigs and this one's just great. And for 200 points, you're going to get two Rumarks. You're going to get the Elite Rumark and the Fly Rumark. He's got a movement 10, a toughness 4, and he can take 16 wounds. With the attack, it's a range of 1. He can make 4 attacks and the strength is 5 here. And you're going to do 2 points of damage on a hit. Four on a critical hit. So for 200 points, I think this is great. 10 movement is fantastic. The strength 5 is awesome. And having 4 attacks, dealing 2 to 4, that's really good too. So you pop a couple of these in the warband, and they're going to be really strong and do some serious damage. For being part of the Gloom Spike Gits, this fighter can use the double backstabbing mob, and also uh, the sneaky stab quad, but he's got his own triple 
which is called Boing Boing Boing. Great name, and here it tells us that until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. Allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So nice and simple, you just gotta get close within one inch and then deal out some damage equal to the value of the ability. So you want a high five or six here and you can simply do some damage as that crazy squig either bites them or like bounces on them. But either way, they're going to take some punishment. I think this is a great fighter, again, to really go into those objectives. You could just float him around. Then when the enemy starts to dominate an objective, bounce on in, take some fighters out with that huge damage output anyway, and then use your triple ability just to really finish them off. So I think really fun and a really good fighter to have in the warband. Maybe a couple of these if you can spare the points. That would be awesome. And we're on to our top spot, the number one, which is the Spirit Host. And it was tough to put this one first between the Squig Hopper, but I just think for the stats, it really deserves it. And the ability is really good too. This fighter is going to come in at 220 points. We've got the Destroyer Rumark and the Fly Rumark. Movement 5 isn't high at all though, but look at that toughness. Toughness 5, that's really useful. And they can take 30 points of damage. With the attack, it's a range of 1. You can make six attacks and so roll in lots of dice, which is always fun. The strength is three, and you're only going to deal one on a hit, but four on a critical hit. So at first glance, it's pretty mixed. The movement is pretty low. They're going to be pretty slow. They're tough, though, and can take some damage. You can roll a lot of attack dice, but they're not very strong. And then the damage output isn't going to be all that much for each individual hit. But they do get an ability that we haven't seen for them yet. So let's check that out and see if that makes them worthy of the top spot. And so they get to use the double aura of dread for being part of the Nighthaunt warband. But it's the triple frightful touch that is theirs. And it tells us that until the end of this fighter's activation, count each hit from attack actions made by them as a critical hit instead. Now I think this is really strong. And as a triple, this is awesome because it's until the end of their activation. So it counts. If you do two attack actions in that one activation, this will count towards them both. So potentially you roll in 12 dice for each activation. It's only strength three, though. So that's going to have some effect on how many hits get through. But if they get through with that frightful touch, they could all be critical hits. So that's crazy. So I think this is a really good triple, a really good ability. And I think that's what makes these really interesting. It's also an awesome looking model. Looks fantastic on the tabletop. And so I think, yeah, this one is my number one, but very close with that Gloom Spike Gets Squig Hopper. So there we go. There's my top 10 flying fighters for Warcry. And there's certainly a lot to choose from. The Caradron Overlords and the Nighthaunt had a ton of flying fighters, all really good with interesting stats. But these are the ones that really stood out to me. But I'd love to know what you like the best, not just from this top 10, but who do you think should have been included in your top 10? Which fighters would you put into yours? So let me know in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear what you come up with. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page, and thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share our ideas and help each other out, and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description, and it'll be great to see you there.